wild rascal, you! Got him! Got him! Reloaded! Fishing with Joe Booker Reloaded is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Hey folks, welcome to our musty segment. Just putting the finishing touches on a, uh, a mag tinsel here in Black Rainbow. And the lesson in today's musky episode is reading water and finding these sandy beaches. One of the most unique patterns I've run into lately in some of the Canadian waters I fish are these, these sandy, little sandy beaches <coughs> that have cabbage outside uh, on the rim of the sand. And they, they seem to be super hot spots for muskies. They seem to have a hot fish on them all the time. You know, Canadian waters are full of rock. So you have a lot of Canadian shorelines that are just like solid rock and have these big slab rock and stuff. And then you have these, these spots in Canada that have this broken rock like you see right in front of me. These broken rock spots are, are good. And, it's, and when they have a sandy beach behind them, see the sandy beach behind me? In fact, all three kinds of, of, of Canadian water that I see a lot is right here. You got the broken rock, you got the sandy beach, and you got the slab rock to the right, to the far right there. See that? Well, this broken rock here, especially a broken rock point like this leading into a sandy beach bay, can be a really good spot. Now, you'll, you sometimes when there's a good wind, you will find the fish on the broken rock on the boulders here. And when there's not as much wind, which like we have today, you're more apt to find the fish back in the weeds along that sandy beach there. When you see these sandy beaches, more often than not, you're going to find some weeds outside the sandy beach. One of the most unique parts of the whole thing is though is that occasionally you find fish on these sandy beaches with no weeds. So keep that in mind that not all sandy beaches are uh, not all sandy beaches are the same and and you may find muskies on these sandy beaches without weeds. And you may also you will also fish many sandy beaches that don't have any fish on them. So you got to check them out. But here we have a sandy beach and here we have a rock point coming in. And I have never fished this spot yet. I'm going to move in here now and see if I can find an active muskie. There's the wind, huh? Rascal, you, you old sandy beach muskie, you. Yeah, oh, you good boy. I'm scouting new water, my friends, and I'm just looking for, I seem to have run into a pattern here. Welcome to our muskie show, by the way. All right, we'll get, get the net on this fish, and I'll tell you what I did here. There he goes. And where he stops, in the net, he only knows. <sighs> oh yeah, look out in front of me here. See the sandy beach on the shoreline and then look where it transitions into rocks, broken rock like that. And see the cabbage in the water right here, see it? These are unique spots in some of the Canadian lakes we fish that are really special. In fact, there's also some boulders, under, sunken boulders in the, under, the, under the water here, in between these weeds. You find spots like this, Never fished a body of water before. Even if spots like this aren't even marked on your the guide's map or whatever you got, check these kind of spots out. They've always got walleyes, pike, and muskies in them. Look at that. Nice cabbage, curly leaf cabbage in them. Sandy beach, broken rock. Killer combination. And we got a muskie. And the old black rainbow. That seems to be my color this year. Yeah. And he's loose. Thank you, you made my job easy. So we'll just pull them out of the net here. Yeah. And we'll put you back. Sure. Nice 
nice 40 inch class fish here. Everything's everything's working just fine here. Don't get don't get this thing all worked up. I'm just gonna pick you up real fast here. Quick pose and back in the water with you. We'll see you next time. Beaches. Beaches and muskies? Really? Yes. Yes, beaches. It's it's a, it, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. Uh, introing this piece because I do a pretty good job of, of explaining the entire topography around me and how beaches really work. One thing I did want to add that really wasn't in this piece that I really discovered since you know I started doing this beach thing is solar. So as you watch this unfold you'll see me talk about the, the, the topography I'm, I'm fishing and how I'm deciphering it and how I recognize these beaches. But what I learned later on after fishing hundreds and hundreds of hours and lots and lots and lots and lots of beaches is that when the sun is baking on them and there's no wind in them, they're actually better. And those, when the wind is chopping into a spot, and I'm not saying you won't catch one in there in those conditions, but they more, more often than not, the beaches are the best one. They're, they're sun baked and they're protected. So I purposely look for those now, and I and I, you know, when I when I see a beach that's getting wind action in it, I I, I will check it, but more uh, quick and randomly randomly quick check it, and I'll ch but I'll check the points leading in and out of the beach, and more often than not, when the wind is coming in, they're on those points, the, the, you know, on, on either side of the beach, but when it's calm, they're right on the beach.